Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our weekly briefing. Happy Earth Day. Today we will hear, as usual, a health, an update from public health, and then we'll be talking about the city's sustainability work. Uh, I would like to mention that it is National Park Week. I hope that you have a chance to get outside and enjoy one of our excellent Madison parks. It's also Volunteer Appreciation Week, so I want to take this opportunity to thank everybody who volunteers in our community. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of work done by volunteers in Madison, and I very much appreciate those contributions uh, to our city and our community. It's also Administrative Professionals Week, um, so thank all of the administrative professionals in your lives uh, for their work as well. All right, we'll turn uh, now to Janelle Heinrich, who is the Director of Public Health Madison-Dane County, for an update. Thank you, Mayor. Good morning. As of today, 43,599 people have tested positive for COVID-19 in Dane County since the beginning of the pandemic, with 422 diagnosed in the past week. COVID activity as measured by case counts, percent positivity, and hospitalizations are stable or slightly increasing right now. While we did see a slight surge in the time around spring break and shortly thereafter, as measured by case counts and percent positivity, we do seem to be plateauing for the moment. Unfortunately, and possibly as the result of this surge in case activity, we are seeing a slight increase in hospitalizations at the moment. Today, we added 98 new, newly diagnosed um, individuals with COVID to our dashboard. Our 14-day average is 76.1 cases per day, up from 75.4 last week. Our percent positivity is 1.1%. And when we exclude all the tests that are done at the university, the seven-day average of our percent positivity is 2.9%, which is down a little bit from last week. Right now, there are 32 individuals hospitalized with COVID in Dane County. Last week, I shared that we were seeing 21% of cases among children under 18 compared to children under 18 making up about 13% of all cases for the duration of the pandemic. I want to point out that while this recent trend is one we're keeping a close eye on, cases among children are down compared to a few months ago. COVID diagnoses among children were more than twice as high in October and November compared to now. Among those aged 12 to 17 years old, we were seeing 30 cases per day in the fall and now we're seeing about 10 cases per day. All other ch ch uh, child age groups are seeing less than three cases per day. You can see these trends updated daily on our trends by age page on our dashboard. The reality is that COVID cases have been increasing amongst almost all age groups under the age of 60 between March and April, not just in children. Every age group from the ages of eight to 59 saw a significant increase in the past month, which we presented in our latest data dash, dash, excuse me, snapshot. Cases are beginning to decrease, and these data will be updated today in today's snapshot. The bottom line is that COVID is still circulating, some people are still having severe outcomes, and we all need to do our part to mask up, stay distance, and get, and get vaccinated. Because children under 16 don't have the opportunity to get vaccinated, it's critical their parents, caregivers, teachers, coaches, and family friends get vaccinated as soon as you are able. If you're at a gathering, keep your distance and gather outside. Wear a mask in public spaces and when around children and people who are unvaccinated. As of yesterday, April 21st, over 54% of the Dane County population has received at least one dose of vaccine. Nearly 38% have completed the vaccine series. We're also excited to see the proportion of those age 65 and older who have completed their vaccine series climb. More than 86% of those in this age group have completed the series. 
And the results of this are reflected in the very small numbers of people in this age group becoming sick. This is a demonstration of the vaccine doing exactly what we want it to do. We're also seeing a rapid increase in vaccination rates among those ages 16 and 17. Nearly four in every 10 have at least one dose of the vaccine. I'm happy to report that it is now easier than ever to get an appointment at the Alliant Energy Center. People who want a vaccine simply need to visit our website, publichealthmdc.com slash vax, V-A-X, and click the big button on the page that says book an appointment now. Please note though, you will still need to register at vaccinate.wi.gov. We still have a couple hundred appointments left for Friday and Saturday of this week, and you can already schedule appointments for next week. Because we are exclusively providing the Pfizer vaccine this week and next, this is a great time to get your 16 or 17 year old vaccinated, as this is the only vaccine authorized for this age group. Until this week, we had far more people wanting vaccine than we had vaccine available. We're starting to see that turn around, which is great news for those who haven't had the time or ability to hunt for a vaccine every day. You no longer need to spend hours searching for a vaccine appointment or think about traveling long distances to get vaccinated. We have vaccine readily available at the Alliant Energy Center and other vaccinators in Dane County have availability as well. Visit our website and book an appointment. We have, an appointment, we have appointments in the evenings and on Saturdays to help accommodate your schedule. There is also a ride service available if transportation to the Alliant Energy Center is a barrier. We are also continuing our mobile vaccination efforts to reach folks who might face barriers with language or transportation. We are working with other area vaccinators to meet people where they're at and bring the vaccine to them. As we continue to vaccinate more and more people, we will be increasing our mobile vaccine efforts. If you think your organization or community would benefit from a mobile clinic, please email our team at coronavirus at publichealthmdc.com and we can follow up. We're nearing 60% of our Dane County population with one dose, which is very, very exciting, but we still have a ways to go. I want to encourage everyone ages 16 and older to get vaccinated as soon as you are able. Dane County is a leader in the state in, va in vaccine coverage, but we need widespread coverage to protect, protect our kids under 16 who are not yet able to get vaccinated. We welcome folks from neighboring counties to come to Alliant to get vaccinated as well. If you have friends and loved ones who are on the fence, please share your reasons for getting vaccinated and what the process was like for you. For me, it was an incredible relief and filled with a lot of emotion for so many reasons. And the ability to hug my friends and my parents and family again without concern has been incredibly uplifting. These personal stories go a long way in encouraging people to get vaccinated. The more vaccination coverage we have in Dane County and across the state, the harder it will be for the virus and more infectious variants to spread. Vaccination is our ticket to a normal summer and beyond. Thank you and stay well. Thank you, Janelle. And let me just emphasize again, wear your masks, keep your distance, wash your hands and get that vaccine, please. Next, we are gonna hear uh, about the city's sustainability efforts and programs. And we're gonna start with Brian Cooper, uh, who's one of our principal architects, to talk about uh, some of the internal work that we're doing on our facilities. Well, thank you, Mayor. Uh, as the mayor said, my name is Brian Cooper. I work in uh, the engineering division uh, in the facilities group. Um, for the presentation today, today I'm focusing on sort of two major categories. Um, we, in, in our group, uh, handle a lot of the major projects the city does for facilities, all the way from budgeting and planning, all the way through uh, construction, and then uh, sometimes even into operation. 
And then another significant chunk of our work is related to ongoing facility improvements. So all the buildings that the city currently owns, such as fire stations, police stations, and other related buildings, uh, we have ongoing uh, programs to make sure that those buildings are operating uh, properly and efficiently. So firstly, um, we use a program at the city called, uh, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a widely used program across the world, but it's called LEAD, uh, which stands for Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design. In 2007, the city council uh, passed a resolution to, um, for all the major city projects to receive a uh, LEED silver minimum rating. Uh, the rating system is platinum as the highest rating, gold, silver, and then certified. Um, basically, it is a, it's sort of an accounting system for sustainability on uh, major projects, uh, facility projects, uh, with um, some of the topics are listed on this slide, but covers uh, all ranges of issues from where the building's located, uh, how efficient the systems in the building are, uh, what types of materials are used, and just sort of the indoor uh, environmental quality uh, for all the uh, occupants. Uh, recently, um, we've uh, been very fortunate to finish three projects for the city. Uh, that have all achieved the LEED Platinum rating, so the highest rating that uh, LEED offers. Uh, those projects are the Ulbrich uh, expansion uh, for the Learning Center and um, the building that we're standing in, or I'm standing in uh, right now, which is the Madison Municipal Building, and also Fire Station 14. Uh, those are some recent projects that uh, completed construction and all achieved uh, LEED Platinum status. And I was just going to briefly talk about some of the ingredients uh, that help get us to that status uh, by using uh, the Madison Municipal Building as a, uh, as a um, short case study. So um, many people are probably know this building. Uh, it's right across the street from the City County Building. It's uh, a historic building. Uh, uh, it's a landmark, a city landmark, and it's on the National Register of Historic Places. So just starting with the idea that you're reusing an existing facility is probably one of the more sustainable things you can actually do. So if you look at this building, it has uh, existing steel, existing concrete uh, for the structure, uh, has existing uh, beautiful stonework on the outside. Um, the um, many, many, many of the windows were existing um, that were restored. And then there's a lot of interior finishes, uh, which I can show you in, a, in some additional slides here, that um, were restored and saved. Uh, just using this photo here to talk a little bit about um, some of the environmental, indoor environmental quality aspects. Um, on the left-hand side of the image, uh, we have the historic windows with a new thermal window on the inside to improve uh, thermal resistance or uh, making the, uh, the draft and air infiltration a little less. Um, and keeping the, outs the warm air outside on um, hot days or cool air outside on cool days. Uh, we have a high efficiency radiators. Uh, we have high efficiency uh, air, uh, mechanical cooling as well as ventilation uh, for the, um, uh, the quality of the space. We also have LED lighting. Um, and, the, um, and one of the important things about making a good uh, building for the occupants is having some control over those um, both lighting and, and indoor uh, comfort, uh, heating and cooling comfort. So those are present uh, as well. Uh, just a few more images here of the interior. Uh, actually, the room we're standing in now is in the middle. Um, but this is uh, included, to, as I mentioned earlier, about uh, preservation uh, of, uh, of the existing materials uh, being a sustainable um, effort. Uh, so we have uh, a, a quite a bit of uh, existing tile was saved and restored, uh, existing plaster throughout the building, existing uh, wood uh, from, um, from uh, you know, many years ago because the building was built in the 1920s. Uh, so instead of having to recreate all of those, uh, we were able to uh, reuse them. Um, sort of going beyond just um, the accounting system, we tried to incorporate other uh, elements to the building that we thought would be sustainable beyond just kind of energy uh, needs. Uh, in the left-hand slide, we have an indoor uh, bike parking space, which is very popular but for staff, um, makes people feel uh, welcome and um, willing to ride their bikes and store them, uh, even on cold winter days. 
Uh, we've incorporated um, nursing rooms for nursing mothers, uh, a, special, uh, a, spe a specific place uh, for that activity so that um, th there is a, a safe private space for that and um, the services in the space to help with that effort. And then we've provided break rooms throughout that have um, access to both daylight and views. Uh, so a good place for people to get away from their desk and, um, um, and, and, and sort of uh, recoup from some of the day's activities. Uh, finally, some of the things you can't see both either on the inside or the outside. Uh, we have a green roof um, on one of the roofs. Uh, that helps with uh, stormwater management. It also helps keep the building cool and uh, cooler in the summer. Um, also on the on the upper roof, we have a 25 uh, kilowatt uh, solar panel system um, that is. Um, uh, I'll get into that in a minute, but it is installed by city staff, designed by city staff, and that helps reduce. Um, well, it's a renewable energy, of course, but it also helps reduce uh, city ongoing operation costs. Just a couple slides on energy use. Um, we, uh, we measured it, of course, before we left uh, the, the building, before the renovation and after. And we're seeing both um, uh, big reductions on both electrical and gas use, uh, roughly 40% reduction in electrical use from um, prior to the renovation, and uh, about 50-ish 50, 50 percent reduction in gas use um, after the renovation. Okay, so moving on to some of the facility improvements, um, the city has a citywide effort to um, reduce energy use um, and rely, um, rely more on renewable energy moving forward uh, with a goal of 2030 being um, using exclusively essentially renewable energies. So um, two major efforts that we're, we have a lot of efforts going on, but two that I'll highlight here our lighting retrofit projects. And what we're doing is we go um, basically citywide and we have about a 10 year program right now where we take out inefficient lighting and we install new lighting, which is LED uh, lighting technology with new controls um, that uh, tie into both um, day lighting as well as uh, user controls. Um, that's, a, that's a big uh, effort right is currently underway and we believe after this is all said and done by 2026 at least uh, we'll be seeing um, annual um, energy savings of about three hundred thousand dollars a year over current situation current conditions uh, this is my last slide um, and it is touching on the solar installations that we do um, I just want to point out both for the lighting and the solar we design that work in-house uh, with our design team, uh, we procure the materials, and then the majority of that work is installed by uh, what we call the Green Power Program, which is uh, links up current uh, uh, licensed master electricians with um, folks in the community that are typically underrepresented in the construction industry, and trains those folks in uh, both solar and electrical um, in, uh, design and installation, um, as well as the lighting retrofit installations. Um, we have a program much like the lighting where we have planned out projects all the way through 2030. Um, from, from 2007 to, to now, uh, we've installed at the city 1.25 megawatts of solar energy. And by 2030, we think we'll have an additional 8.75 megawatts if the program uh, continues through that time period. Uh, once completed, uh, we think we're gonna be close to a million dollars in um, energy savings uh, in terms of dollars and of course a significant reduction in um, our contribution to pollution and air quality. Um, as I mentioned on the lighting, um, the solar is also designed by uh, city staff and uh, procured by city staff and then this team here on the left, uh, at least for 2021, is doing all the installations uh, for those solar projects. Um, and with that, that's the end of my presentation.
Thank you, Brian. It's great to hear about all the work that we're doing uh, to make our buildings more sustainable, and I'm a huge fan of that Green Power program, as I think you all have heard in the past. Next, we're going to hear from Stacy Reese, who's our Sustainability Program Coordinator, about some of the work uh, that's happening out in the community as well. Thank you, Mary. Uh, so yes, happy Earth Day. Um, it's the 51st Earth Day, and I like to call it Happy Earth Day slash week slash month slash year. You can celebrate all year round. And proud to have Wisconsin Roots with Earth Day as one of the founders is former governor and Wisconsin Senator Gaylord Nelson, uh, for which the Nelson Institute at uh, UW-Madison um, carries his name. And they're currently having their uh, Earth Day uh, conference today and tomorrow virtually, and it is free, and I invite you to attend if you have the space and time to do so. Uh, the origins of Earth Day was really uh, based in civil disobedience and demonstration around environmental injustices uh, and climate activism. What uh, came out of the original Earth Day 51 years ago was the creation of the Environmental Protection Agency, as well as the Clean Air Act and the Clean Water Act. Um, so what's exciting about this week also is that yesterday, uh, Mayor Rhodes Conway announced the City of Madison's Climate Forward Agenda, where over the next two years, we'll be reducing our emissions, increasing our resilience, and providing green job opportunities. And the way that we'll be achieving those is through acquiring 100% renewable energy for city operations, electricity, renovating our city-maintained streetlights to LEDs, looking at efficient building uh, through uh, commercial building policies, as well as uh, through a grant from the Office of Energy Innovation, working with Elevate and Sustain Dane in the naturally occurring affordable housing building stock. We're also gonna continue building out our bus rapid transit system and electrifying our Metro bus fleet. We'll be developing a climate grant program for community projects and as the mayor said, we want to expand our Green Power trainee program across the organization. And lastly, investing in green infrastructure and stormwater to uh, build in more resilience to the impacts of climate change. Kind of backing out a little bit further into the state, we are officially joining the Wisconsin Local Government Climate Coalition through resolution. This is a coalition of communities across Wisconsin where approximately one in three Wisconsin residents live in a community with climate and energy goals. So this collaboration will be working to advocate at the state level to help us achieve those climate and energy goals. So I'm gonna pivot a little bit on how uh, residents of Madison can celebrate Earth Day week, month, year uh, by various energy, waste, and transportation efforts. Uh, one program I'd like to point to is our statewide energy efficiency program focused on energy. They have uh, the opportunity for uh, participants to uh, fill out a form to receive a free box of LED lights. As Mr. Cooper mentioned, we have a lot of LED retrofits here at the city so that we can find those energy efficiency and lower bills and reducing our emissions. So if you'd like a free box of LEDs, go to focusonenergy.com and fill out their form and they will deliver this box directly to your front door. LEDs consume 75% less energy than incandescent bells and have a much longer lifespan. We're also excited that we are kicking off the sixth year of the Madison program in partnership with Renew Wisconsin. Madison offers a residential group buy program, business incentives, as well as a backyard grant for affordable housing providers and nonprofits. Tonight, Renew is hosting a webinar to learn more about the Madison program. It's at 7 p.m. And if you'd like to register and learn more about the Madison program, please go to Madison Solar, that's M-A-D-I-S-U-N, solar.com. And this year, we kicked off our first year of our Master Recycler program. Uh, in partnership with Sustain Dane, we just wrapped up our first cohort here in April. However, our second session will be happening in July. Cohort members will learn how to recycle right and become ambassadors in our community, uh, sharing how, what they've learned 
about um, recycling in Madison. And if you are unable to attend our July session this year, then I highly recommend checking out our 2021 Recyclopedia hot off the press and in my favorite color purple. This way you can download the PDF and become your own master recycler. And we're also excited to announce that uh, this year, the city of Madison has been accepted into the NRDC's Great Lakes cohort under their Food Matters Initiative. The Food Matters Initiative is working with uh, cities across the US to help reduce food waste. 20% of what goes in our uh, Dane County landfill today is organic material. So through this initiative, we'll be doing an awareness campaign uh, over the summer and fall, so stay tuned for that. And our streets division has uh, three drop-off sites for food scraps for recycling. So if you'd like to learn where those three locations are and what is accepted in those food scrap recycling bins, please go to the cityofmadison.com slash streets. And we're also very proud here at the city of Madison of our um, own fleet that we've been electrifying and looking into other uh, greener fuels. Uh, our fleet division has reduced or avoided over 2,000 metric tons of CO2 emissions. Later today, I will be grabbing one of our Chevy Bolts uh, and driving around in our city's EV parade. So starting at 2 o'clock at Birmingham Park and driving around the Isthmus and downtown area. So if you see us out there, please give us a wave or honk. Also, we have... Uh, B-Cycle is offering free rides uh, today on Earth Day. So if you're looking for another no tailpipe emission way to get around town, you can go to bcycle.com to download their app, selecting the uh, single ride, and then entering the promo code EARTHDAY21. And you can uh, shake off the rust from winter hibernation. And lastly, a shout out to our Parks Division uh, that they are having an Earth Day challenge this weekend. So this Saturday uh, on April 24th from uh, 10 to 12, uh, groups of volunteers uh, at parks all across the city of Madison will be working together to clean up the trash, do some weeding and raking, and getting our parks beautiful for this coming year. Uh, registration is required, and the deadline to register is tomorrow by 10 a.m. So I encourage you to uh, get out there and register right away. And with that, I wish everyone a happy 51st Earth Day. Thank you. Thank you. What a great list of things going on in our community. I encourage folks to take advantage of the B-Cycle offer, and please do join me at the Earth Day Challenge in our parks on Saturday. Um, I will be out there, I imagine, picking up trash and pulling weeds. Um, and would really encourage folks uh, to come along. All right, I have just a few things uh, to quickly go through. Uh, first of all, yesterday uh, was Administrative Professionals Day. I know I already announced the week, but there's a day too. This is how these things go. Um, and so I just want to say thank you to the administrative professionals in our office, Nicole, Lila, Diana, Neve, uh, and the entire A-team. Thank you for your work. Um, obviously, today's Earth Day. Happy Earth Day again. Tomorrow is Arbor Day, uh, appropriately placed close to Earth Day uh, because trees are so, so critical um, to our world. And so hug a tree, better yet plant a tree, um, or take care of one of the trees near you on Arbor Day and every day. Um, I do also want to circle back um, and thank public health for their work on uh, making vaccines available to our whole community. Uh, it's just absolutely critical that we make sure there's equitable access to vaccination uh, here in Madison and Dane County. And I want to appreciate both public health and the entire group of vaccinators that is working to do uh, mobile vaccine clinics um, and connect people to that vaccine. Um, Stacy mentioned Climate Forward. I encourage you to, to check that out uh, and learn more on our blog uh, at, in the mayor's office. It's so critical that we make progress on climate. Uh, we have to cut our greenhouse gas emissions in half by 2030. And I want to say a quick thank you to President Biden for committing the United States to that goal. Um, the city of Madison has had that goal for a while now, and I'm absolutely delighted that the country is joining us in that. Um, but 
you may be counting on your fingers and notice that we do not have very much time uh, to make that goal. So it's critical that we take action now uh, to reduce greenhouse gas uh, emissions. This is work that not only helps the environment, but also improves air quality and public health, lowers utility bills uh, for residents and businesses, and will create more opportunities for good paying, high quality jobs. I firmly believe that Madison is ready to accelerate our climate action uh, for the benefit our, of our community and our world, and the city is taking action to do so. I invite all of you to join me. There are simple ways that you can reduce your greenhouse gas footprint. Um, certainly look at your driving habits, look at your electricity use, um, look at your food waste uh, and your consumption of meat. All of these things contribute to your footprint. Uh, and I encourage you to do what you can to reduce it. Uh, one thing that I want to mention that is in the Climate Forward Plan is the work we're doing on naturally occurring affordable housing with partners. Um, I thank our partners, Sustain Dane and Elevate and the Northside Planning Council. Um, and I want to thank the Office of Energy Innovation at the state for helping to fund this work. This is critical for us to make affordable housing efficient, healthy, and safe for our community. We all know that we're in a housing crisis. We need to preserve naturally occurring affordable housing um, and to improve the condition of that housing. And this project will help us. I hope that it is just the beginning of much, much more work um, in our naturally occurring affordable housing stock. Uh, all right, I do uh, want to mention a few other things. Um, you may remember that Metro Transit uh, is having a BRT station design contest. Uh, well, we have got all of the entries, um, and uh, we are now asking you for feedback on them. Um, this is uh, it's exciting. There's a lot of interesting uh, ideas um, in the station designs. Uh, there's 20 plus of them, I think, uh, to go through. Um, the winner uh, it will receive $10,000, and then we will use uh, the design or a version of the design in our uh, BRT stops. Um, so if you are interested in giving feedback, checking out the visuals uh, and giving feedback, uh, please visit uh, the mymetrobus.com um, site and uh, check out all of the nice pictures. There have been some media coverage as well, and there's a way that you can give feedback on each of the designs. Um, you can also email brt at cityofmadison.com uh, for more information about this and the entire uh, bus rapid transit project. Also seeking feedback uh, is beyond the page and the Dane County Libraries. Uh, they are seeking applications for humanities-based programs from across Dane County that will take place in 2022. They've set aside $30,000 to fund programming around the themes of race and equity. Those funds can be applied for and used to pay speakers and performers to market the event and coordinate logistics. They're looking for proposals for programs in the following areas art, music, culture with a humanities focus, or understanding race and racism through a humanities lens, or programs designed by and for people of color, perhaps encompassing wellness, empowerment, community building, or more. Uh, so if you are interested in applying, uh, please contact, uh, uh, please call 608-217-0451 for information or assistance with the application process or, or visit beyondthepage.info slash apply. And they're accepting applications through June 1st. So plenty of time to consider that. Uh, Stacy mentioned our Recyclopedia. Uh, which is now fresh and new and ready for you. Um, you can download copies at the Streets Division website, or if you want a printed copy, we can mail them on request, or you can pick them up at Streets Division offices. Um, so you can give a call to uh, the Sycamore office at 608 246-4532 to request a mailed copy or the Badger Road office at 608-266-4681. 
um, or email streets at cityofmadison.com and they will be happy to get you your very own copy of the Recyclopedia. I encourage you to check it out because it's a wealth of information, not just about what you can put in your bin to be recycled, but also how you can deal with the things that you can't put in your bin to be recycled and uh, options to reduce, reuse, and recycle, as they say. Um, all right. Uh, then, you know, every week I talk about this uh, financial navigators program that we have uh, here at the city. And I wanted to just say a few more words about it this week uh, because I think it's a great resource uh, for folks. Um, we know that COVID has had a, a pretty tremendous financial impact on many people in our community um, and that the relief policies and programs are constantly changing. We've had multiple rounds of federal funding. Um, there's been different state programs, different county programs, different city programs. It can be difficult to navigate all of these assistance programs, uh, not to mention the existing benefits programs uh, that were here pre-COVID. Um, so to help folks navigate all of this information, uh, the city, uh, through our public library, we're providing a financial resources hotline uh, where folks can uh, get connected to a financial navigator, set up an appointment, uh, and talk through options and resources that might fit them and their circumstances. So financial navigators might be able to help you uh, with utility support. Um, the, the disconnection moratoria uh, have ended. Um, so if folks have a backlog of utility bills, uh, this is certainly a place that the navigator can help um, folks understand if they qualify for the Wisconsin Home Energy Assistance Program uh, or if they can uh, work out a deal with their utility on a payment plan uh, or more options. Another option is to get help with medical coverage, uh, with health insurance. The um, health insurance marketplace is open through August 15th and navigators can help connect you to that marketplace or to other resources in our community um, to help you get health insurance. And they can also help uh, with accessing the stimulus checks if you haven't gotten yours already and navigating tax filing. Uh, we have until May 17th to file both state and federal taxes this year. So if you have questions about that or uh, your unemployment benefits and how that impact on your taxes or the stimulus checks, the financial navigators are another good resource here to help you just navigate all of that. So if you're interested in this resource, you can visit cityofmadison.com slash financial hotline. That's cityofmadison.com slash financial hotline and fill out an interest form. Or you can call 608-266-6300 uh, to reach a financial navigator. Um, and of course, we have uh, lots of information on our community resources page and the United Way. 211 is another resource for folks. So I just encourage people to take advantage of that. It's been a really, really complicated year uh, for many of us financially, and there is no shame in asking for some help navigating through um, your particular circumstances. All right, so just a few other notes on community resources. Again, 211 is a great option to connect to uh, programs. We talked about the uh, Financial Navigators program. We also have a housing helpline, uh, which is 608-264-0549 or email housinginfo at cityofmadison.com. The state has an internet and phone helpline at the Public Service Commission. That's 608-267-3595. If you need help finding a child care provider, call 608-216-7022. Um, again, if you need help getting health insurance through the uh, healthcare.gov marketplace, um, call 211 and they can help you navigate that uh, or call our financial navigators. Um, there is also potentially assistance available to help pay uh, for premiums. Uh, and then finally, a lot of this is accessible online. If you do not have computer access uh, yourself at home, you can visit our libraries, sign up for a, a slot at one of the computer stations um, to access these resources. Many of our libraries have these one-hour slots available for computer and internet access, and you can call 608-266-6300. That's 608-266-6300 to make an appointment. 
you visit cityofmadison.com and click on the community resources link, uh, all this information and more is there online. Also want to plug my blog, cityofmadison.com slash mayor slash blog, where you can read more about Climate Forward and Housing Forward and all the other things that we're working on at the city. Finally, upcoming meetings. Uh, Thursday the 22nd, hey, that's today. At 4.30, the Housing Strategy Committee meets. At 5 o'clock, the Disability Rights Commission meets. And at 5.30, the Affirmative Action Commission will meet. On Monday the 26th at 4.30, the Finance Committee meets. Also at 4.30, Sustainable Madison Committee meets. And at 5.30, the Plan Commission meets. On Tuesday the 27th at 4.30, the Water Utility Board meets. And on Wednesday the 28th at 2.30, the Committee on Aging will meet. At 4.30, the Urban Design Commission will meet. And at 5 p.m., the Transportation Commission will meet. That is what I have for this week. Happy Earth Day again. And let's see if we have any questions. We do not have questions today, Mayor. No questions today. Get outside, enjoy the earth, enjoy the sun, spend some time in a park or on a bicycle, uh, and have a great day, everybody.